Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I want to show you how to do this confetti explosion in TIE Flow. So you could set something like this up in Particle Flow as well, except these are little cloth simulations. So they're fluttering and they're bending. And then when they hit the ground, they bend like real sort of soft paper wood. And then we have some wind pushing into the side. Um, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jesse. I'm a visual effects artist based in Los Angeles and I've been posting a lot of tutorials and I'll be posting a lot more for TIE Flow in the next few days so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when I post a new one. So let's just set this up from scratch so as always let's just make a TIE Flow icon first and then let's go under helpers, TIE Flow and create a TIE icon so this will be where the confetti will explode out of so let's do burst position icon let's add some rotation also add shape we only want to emit particles for one frame because we want it to be served at one frame explosion for a total of in the end we're gonna do thousand but for now let's do 500 just so that it's faster for the position icon let's pick this icon and let's also add some speed let's do direction along icon arrow and let's Let's pick this icon again and reverse so that they go up like this and if you want to follow this tutorial click by click let's just make sure that we're working in the same units so go under customize unit setup and in this case I'm working in US standard decimal inches with one unit being one inch so for the magnitude let's do 20 70 percent variation now for the rotation let's do random 3d and let's set this to about 3 on X and then for the shape, let's create the shape ourselves. So we're gonna go under standard, plane, and let's just create a small little plane. This is gonna be our little confetti and maybe give it four segments on both length and width. Add selected, remove the 2D shape that's, the, that's there by default. And then I can go under display and set this to geometry. So let's go back under shape and maybe reduce the scale to about 40%. So we're gonna add a slow operator here and we can set the velocity to about three on all axes so it's gonna be hard for us to see how this is working or not until we add a gravity and have them fall down so let's add a force here you have the built-in gravity so you can just set that to minus 0 0.03 and then let's go back under speed and give it some divergence so maybe 15 and now you can see it's starting to come together they sort of shoot up and then they slow down and then they slowly start falling down. So let's extend our timeline by clicking on this time configuration and maybe make it 400 frames long. So what's going to help sell this effect are all the forces. So let's add another force and let's set the strength to five with a scale of 0 0.15. All right, so now let's just play with these values and refine this a little bit. So let's go back under shape and make it a little bigger just so we can see this better. So I'm gonna set the scale to 100 and let's go back under that force and I feel like 5 is way too much so maybe let's set this to 0.5 and then you can go under this velocity percentage under the force effect and maybe let's set that to 70% and see what that looks like so they shoot up and then they start slowly falling down so this looks pretty good and you just have to play with the forces at this point the gravity and everything to get it to look the way you want so let's add another force and put it right here under the first force and maybe let's set this one to turbulence just to do something different and for the strength we can do 0.5 for the frequency we can do 0.5 for scale maybe we can do 2 and then for velocity let's do maybe 30 with a 50% spin and see what that will do so that looks pretty nice. I like how slowly they're falling down and they look like they're being affected by air. And now let's add a spin and put it under rotation up here. And let's go to timing and set it to continuous so that it continuously makes the particle spin throughout the entire event. And maybe let's set the spin rate to something high like um, 500 and maybe give it like a 30% variation and now let's play that and I think that's looking pretty nice just so that we can see better let's go under material 
and let's make this like a red material and apply it to tie flow so now we have our confetti except it's not cloth yet so it's not being deformed so let's go and add a cloth bind so when you add the cloth bind it's going to show you all of the different points of the cloth so what you can do is just click on display and it will disable it so that you can see just the confetti or just the little cloths basically like this now you can see they're already behaving like cloths, you know, they're getting bended and everything. So for the mass, you can just set that to 0.1 just because they're really light. And the binding stiffness um, just controls how stiff the cloth is uh, based on these different factors. So how stiff it is to stretch or not stretch, shear, bend. So for stretch, let's do 0.7. And you know, remember every time you change some of these numbers, Tie flow has to do the calculation for the entire timeline until it gets to the frame where you're at. So it's good to maybe go back to zero when you're changing these numbers. So let's change the shear stiffness to 0.7 as well. And then what you can do is enable this add shell to surface, which will just give it a little bit of thickness. And we can set the outer amount to zero and just give it like a little bit of an inner amount just so that it has a little bit of a thickness so inner amount of 0 0.01 so now if i look at what we have we have a bunch of little cloth fluttering and flying through the air so now what we want is for these to interact with the ground and fall on the ground so what you can do is go under space warps deflectors and just make a big deflector over the entire ground area here and then we need to add a collision operator on the bottom here and let's pick the deflect as our collision object now what's happening is that the tie flow icon is w basically in the exact same place as the deflector so we need to just grab it and raise it higher and so now as you can see the confetti falls to the ground and then it's still being affected by the force which kind of looks nice it's as if it's being affected by wind so maybe i don't want them to keep sort of flying around even after they fall down i want them to sort of just settle and just stay in place after a certain amount of time so what you can do is go back in force and go up here in timing and right now it's set to continuous, so throughout the entire event it will be affected by this force. But we can set that to particle H and maybe tell it to only be affected from frame 0 to frame 200 with a maybe 30% variation. So basically after a certain amount of time, when the particles fall down, you can see that they will just sort of stop fluttering and they will just they will just settle in place so one last thing i want to add to this is that i want them to be blown by wind to the side a little bit so i can add another force operator so you already have this built in wind you just have to raise the strength so we're maybe gonna set the x to minus 0 0.1 and set the strength to something like 0.1 and it's a pretty sensitive value so already you can see they're being blown to the side quite a bit so maybe we can lower the strength to like 0 0.01 see what that'll do we just want something really subtle okay so that looks pretty good so what you can do is just add a material id and put it under shape and set that to random you would just go under materials and create a multi sub object discard the old material all right so after you've added your colors you can just grab that multi sub object material and apply it to tie flow and voila every random sort of confetti will have a different color and so this is our final effect for today so the only thing about this that i still don't like is that it seems a little too uniform and unbroken up in the very beginning when it's exploding so i'm gonna add one more force and I'm just gonna keep it a purling, maybe set the strength to 5 and the frequency to 0.5 and then I'm gonna go to timing and this time I'm gonna set it to event H and I'm gonna set that to a range of maybe 0 to 40 frames so just from frame 0 to 40 it will be affected by this pretty strong force just so that it's broken up when it's exploding and then when I play that back you get something a little more random and realistic, I think. So I just wanted to show you a lot of these different techniques. You know, we have some cloth, we have some spin, we have some forces, collision, deflector. 
definitely a lot that I hope that you can take from this. Definitely be sure to check out some of the other tutorials. Uh, I would appreciate a thumbs up. I would, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later.